بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم These are the times I turn to the wisdom of James Baldwin. Life is tragic simply because the earth turns and the sun inexorably rises and sets and one day for each of us the sun will go down for the last last time. Perhaps the whole root of our trouble, the human trouble is that we will sacrifice all the beauty of our lives, will imprison ourselves in totems, taboos, crosses, blood sacrifices, steeples, mosques, races, armies, flags, nations, in order to deny the fact of death, the only fact we have. It seems to me that one ought to rejoice in the fact of death, ought to decide indeed to earn one's death, by confronting with passion the conundrum of life. One is responsible for life. It is the small beacon in that terrifying darkness from which we come and to which we shall return. All we knew was darkness before we entered this world and we return to darkness when the soil fills the hole if all we saw was darkness, when the light dawns, it would blind us. But we await the light, knowing that it won't stay dark forever. Allah blessed us with an inbuilt mechanism to cope, to deal effectively with something difficult. Inna mal yusri yusra, after hardship comes ease. When calamity strikes and adversity surround us, we remind each other of this verse. We watched as our mother slipped away in a COVID hospital ward. My sister yells via an iPad screen, she's gone. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. This is the terrifying ride that you cannot say no to and walk away. The bell rings. Kids running around come to a standstill. I walk in holding my mother's hand and run to join the others. The teacher grabs me by the arm and shakes me violently, asking why am I still running after the bell has gone? My mum, an immigrant from Bangladesh with broken English, shrieks back, you don't have to shake him like he's a dog. Silence from the teacher. I was five years old. Witnessing this strength, this experience stayed with me for the rest of my life. Although I've run from the questions of who I am, as a son of an immigrant and a Muslim, sooner or later it will catch up with you and look you right in the face to ask you questions you cannot escape. This is the biggest loss in my life, but I embrace the strength I've inherited from the spirit of my mother. It comes to us all, yet death is the biggest taboo in life. When it does happen, we crumble. Our minds can't comprehend it. Despite knowing it's inescapable, we are never ready for it. Continuing the legacy of my mother, I see it as a sense of duty son of migrants who travel great distances to seek a new life, leaving loved ones thousands of miles away as they establish their homes and families elsewhere. How can I not passionately build a place that our parents struggle so hard to establish as home? Those efforts would be in vain if I did not continue that determination and perseverance. My mother ran a fish and chip shop in Anderton Road, Sparkbrook. Prince Charles came to our neighborhood back then and it was the busiest day for our chip shop ever. Seven pence for a bag of chips. We made a whole 18 pound that day. Immigrants sponging off the system, they say. An Asian woman running a chip shop in the 70s. You find me an Asian woman doing that today 
in 2021. I know nothing but strength. This is why the biggest calamity in my life, the loss of my beloved mother, I have to continue to embody the strength of my mother. We continue to build for the next generations. We persevere, we fight, we win. I say to my kids, don't ever say you can't. We can, we will, and we must, in the name of those who struggled before us. There is an invisible veil that falls across vast swathes of society, a veil that separates us in an increasingly polarized society. We had a mirror shone in front of us. We looked at ourselves. We have questioned the value of things that we took for granted. We realized how death was right under our noses and on our doorsteps. It was coming for us. This glitch moment, this moment that took us by the shoulders, perhaps it was necessary. It was necessary for us to wake up. We realize how we are not immortal. We wear out, we age, we decay. We should embrace the idea that everything comes to an end, except for the legacy we leave behind. As we approach the pandemic aftertimes, Joan Didion rings true. We tell ourselves stories in order to live. Toni Morrison called us to a greater aspiration. Make up a story, she said. For our sake and yours, forget your name in the street. Tell us what the world has been to you in the dark places and in the light. Don't tell us what to believe, what to fear. Show us belief's wide skirt and the stitch that unravels fear's call. On one hand, makeup. On the other, a tool, emblem of sisterhood. Arms, struggle, home. We fought our way, earned the right to pop color on our cushioned lips, beautify the world with our gift, Signs that we are here on the collar of white shirts. Pose for the gram, pout with our friends, tell ourselves we are beautiful and with our body make amends. Arched into submission, like the prophet who split the moon. Holy books missed her as she parts midway. She grabs the roots, forages to the scalp, threads her finger through the forest and entangles spirals wound. Doughy, warm, grease, the color of Turkish motifs sit on the back of her carapetone palm. She is like a scaffold. Her legs house the body sat between them. The final element of her blue magic, box braids, black twist, two strands, the story of how comb became instrument to construct crowns. Girls who ride a number 18 bus in the 266, who are vegan some months but can murder a mixed lamb and chicken shawarma from a rouge on others, who love Reebok classics, gassing with their besties about their latest situationships, girls who wear red lipstick, listen to Kei Trinada, Getz and Wu-Tang, who consider mutter I swear down, and have a thing for dark-skinned dudes with thick beards too, dream of losing themselves in deserts where they wrap themselves in mofas and tobe, look like Hagar, Rabia el Adawiya, and think about nothing but God, Black henna painted fingertips, flicking the balls from their thicker beads, as if on the other side heaven awaits. Cover their face, lower their gaze, sit at the feet of their sheikh and sing songs of praise. Look into the mirror and you might glimpse something of the love that made you, 
Perhaps you'll see that love passing behind you or moving in and out of the corner of your eye. The true lovers of love see it plainly. Bulle Shah, the poet, declared, Your love has made me dance like mad. Tere ishq ne jaya, tenya tenya. Falling in love with you was like taking a sip of poison. Come, my healer, forsaken, I am sad. Your love has made me dance like mad.
so I've brought you a mirror. Look at yourself. Beloved one, if God were to be found by bathing and washing, then God would be found by fish and frogs. If God were to be found by roaming in the jungle, then God would be found by cows and buffaloes. God is found by hearts righteous and pure. So, you've read a thousand books, but have you read yourself? You rush to mosques and temples in indecent haste. Have you tried to enter yourself? You are engaged in needless battle with Satan, but have you ever fought with your ego self? You have reached the skies, but have failed to reach what's in your heart. So, come, come to my abode, my friend, morning, noon, and night. Examples you set, respect the planet, the creator. I will never forget all the love and strength you've given me. I'll pass it on and pray often, waiting for our reunion. I'm thankful for the blessings and the lessons in this lifetime. Cherish the memories you left behind. My heart is broken, can't believe that was our final goodbye. I try to smile, but sometimes I cry.
always love you. I will always love you. I will raise you up. Divine mercy, purify my soul, stay faithful on the journey. So I 